the Olympic Peninsula, or the OP as those in the know like to call it. Across the Puget Sound and far from the decimation of Seattle lies one of Mother Nature's finest achievements, a land like no other. A Jurassic rainforest or majestic rivers converge and become one with the Pacific Ocean. Some call it the land of the giants. Some call it mystical. Some call it home. We call it heaven. AJ. How you doing, Justin? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna lock this thing up. I'm yeah, jumping in with you guys. Yeah, so Alex, does, he's not gonna make it tomorrow. He's coming tomorrow. Uh, uh, but not fishing. No, no, he won't be fishing. That's the drive up, dude. After he told me he couldn't make it. <laughs> he's got that, like, perfect storm. <laughs> he didn't sound super happy when I called him. No, uh, I just talked to him on the phone because I went in and visited her. Because this shop sells a ton of our shit. They're a great little store. Dude, that place is awesome. It's a rad store. Fuck. Dude, it was busy as shit in there today. I went and got my license and stuff in there. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I can get fried chicken, Carhartt gear, and some trout gear, and <laughs> some steelhead gear. And like, It's a cool little store. I love that little shop, man. Dude, I love this little town, man. Adam and I made this trip a few years ago with our buddy John Loomis. And on the way home, I called Dustin and I demanded that he join us on the next trip. You might recognize Dustin from the Striper trip that we took to California in season one. Dustin has treated us well over the years, so we figured we owed him one. This trip was the perfect payback. Right, it's like Michelle was asking me, she's like, so what's, what are you guys doing like that? I go, dude, I have no idea. No, I showed up up here yeah. at 1230 at night You're like, with no plan. I just knew we're hitting the river with Adam and Alex. You're just like, they'll tell me who we're fishing with. Yeah, I, I have my gear, right? Yeah. <laughs> tell me why I did it. Like, if you got rain gear and waders, you're good. Of course. We're not fit, so uh, no fly rods tomorrow. No. Would be, would be bought or fish ups. I love that. Spinner rods or bait. I love that. I love that too. Yeah, spinner rods or bait. Oh, so this guy, he's been guiding up here forever. Yeah, 25 years or 26 kind of years. He's made a run. But yeah, just a, been my friend for like 24 years, 20 something years now. Been guiding here for a long time. I mean, I can't wait. He's one of the fishiest dudes I've ever, I can't wait. He's, he's awesome. And, Alex, that when you guys came back from that last trip, he called me up and said, dude, you've got to come up and see this. I think it was literally, Alex was like, this was the best steelhead fishing I've ever seen in my life. You guys did a good day. Yeah, but I've had lots of good, I've had bad days here too, but, but uh, it ain't going to be a bad day tomorrow. I don't even care. Dude, I'll throw my hook out there. I will be throw a line with no hook on it. Like, it'll be, it's, I just want to float down the river, AJ. It'll be a good day. The place is beautiful. There's tons of white water. It's like... Big giant polders, deep swirly runs everywhere. I can't wait. It's cool, man. hit the river early and got right to business. Now all these fellas are great anglers, so there was no messing around. Yes sir. You and I are in the boat, AJ. That's, a, that's just a recipe for success, my friend. So a turn of unfortunate events prevented me from joining my compadres on day one of their journey. 
as it sometimes does in the world of business, the proverbial shit hit the fan, and I was the one left holding the mop and bucket. However, we found a positive within the negative. Adam has been friends with Mike Zavodlov for years, and when I couldn't make day one, he threw his grandson Ashton in the boat to take my place. Head, <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah. When I'm doing something wrong, you let me know. <laughs> Since we had a pile of guys for the two-day trip, Mike booked his pal Bob Ball to row the second boat. Bob is just as seasoned as Mike on these rivers, and he did a great job of putting our old pal Dustin Parsons on some great fish. When we do anchor like this, um, I'm kind of a believer that random casts catch random fish. I try to have kind of a little methodology of making short casts and working five to six feet out from the boat. There he is. All right, baby. Picture perfect right there. Mm -hmm. My first, my first Washington steelhead, man. We can certainly get a picture for it. We better get a picture. Right, if you like. Look at that fish. Look at that fish. Well, you don't like that fish. Coming or going? That might one be might be going back. No. What a beautiful fish! I wish I could have been there to see Dustin land his first OP steelhead. It's truly a magical thing, and I know he will never forget. <laughs> nice job, brother. Got a baby, AJ. Look at that steelhead, man. Nice Boy, steel those are terrible, Adam. No, that'll do, huh? Got to get a picture of my first one, right? But that's exactly why it's good to book multiple days when you come here. One day can be lights out, and the next can be a ghost town. You just never know. Exciting though. <laughs> there he is. You can tell the way that the float went down it was fish. Yeah. That was cool.
Fly away from me, don't come to me. They're coming right out of you. So I'm being charged. Good job, man. Good job, AJ. Like, well, let's find you a big one. Well, dude, I'm pumped. I don't, like, that's fantastic, man. Like, oh my God. Up. On back to the right side. Slap the high stick a little bit. Oh gosh. In you, our backyard. You guys live right here. That's what he was telling me. You walk right down to the water. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yes. We are very, very, very lucky to live in a beautiful place. I can see why you come back every year. Every year, dude. Oh my gosh. Every year I can. I missed 30, a few 30 years. 30 years, Bob? 30... 32. 91. Yeah, when I ran my first trip. Mike and Bob have been running these rivers for many years and clearly know every boulder in the river. The amazing thing about Mike in particular is that he not only knows every rock, he knows every bird, every tree, and damn near every blade of grass. He's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this fishery and this forest. You used to cut those things down with a hand saw. I know. Yeah. Okay, today your job is to cut the tree down. <laughs> yeah, this hand week. Saw. This yeah. week out. Uh, but then hauling the tree it, down this week. But then they had to haul it out. Oh, dude. I know. Yeah, you ever see they cut them in super short, like eight foot sections? Cause yeah. They couldn't, I know. Like the truck couldn't haul any more than like an no. eight foot section of it. There was until today. No, after I hit that one rock up above, it's like I'm not even gonna try that one today. Almost. He's waking up now. That is a beauty. Oh. Bravo! <laughs> Bob, you're the man! The Olympic Peninsula is truly a special place, and regardless of your political affiliation or special interest, 
I think anyone who sets foot in these waters can agree. There's just nothing quite like it. And we need to make sure that they're still around for the next generation to enjoy. Is that the Look at one? that steelhead, dude. Is that the biggest one? That's the biggest one I've ever caught. Good nice, job. brother. Two. Right on. Wow. Oh. Wow. Dude, that was awesome. See, they're getting bigger. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Grab the leader. There we go. I may let go any time though. But this is. It's right by me, dude. It's just right here, dude. Yep, we're gonna go hide under the boat. Awesome. <laughs> but nice. Honestly, how. 
90 percent of our fish are hemp right there yeah all the regular yes, guys sir. come out here lots <laughs> we don't even we don't net them we just bring them up alongside kick them loose but there he is aj swimming around right by you Watching this footage is really difficult for me. I have some serious fear of missing out as I record this audio. These guys were having a banner day and I was sitting in my truck. Hi, honey. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm uh, stuck behind some guy in a Hyundai venue that's doing 25 miles an hour. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Tons of fun. Oh my god. I don't know if you've heard across the uh, airwaves, but I've caught the new state record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's my, it's my new record. You having a good time? Dude, I'm five for five. No shit. Yeah, dude, I've been, on, I've been catching them today. I, you know, flying hog finds an acorn every now and again, dude. <laughs> I love it. All right, brother. Well, we're just checking in with you. Drive safe. We'll see you when you get here, man. All right. Sounds good. All right, brother. wrapped up their multi-fish day as I was rolling into town. My ass was asleep and my brain was half jacked on Red Bull and coffee. I met up with them at their hotel to plan day two of our annual trip to our version of the happiest place on earth. So tell me about it. 